welcome to Fierce Female Filmmakers. Today, my guest is Zoe Manzotti. She is, well, she's many things, actually. She's an accomplished classical and jazz pianist. She's an actress and she's a filmmaker. She has just completed her first feature film called Sugar Beach. Welcome, Zoe. And how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm very excited. Um, Very briefly, I went to Amherst College where I studied piano performance and I was a music major. I also studied acting. Um, And then once I graduated, I moved back to LA and decided I wanted to uh, make films myself. I wanted to act, but I also didn't want to like wait around for the right role or keep auditioning and and not getting it or waiting for a casting director. I was like, no, I'm going to just start now uh, myself and like write my own stories and start making some, some stuff. Was that something that you were aware of amongst your group of uh, friends at school as well? Or did you feel quite singular in that desire? Um, I did feel singular in that desire. Yes. Um, there, everyone, most of my friends actually were very busy auditioning and, and traveling and they had, they have agents and they were booking things, but I wasn't. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to just, I have to do it myself. I can't like keep waiting. But one of my classmates that, um, is a co-producer on my current project, um, was in like the same boat as me. And she was like, Zoe, um, let's do it ourselves. So um, not too long after we graduated, um, we both got back to LA and we were like, let's make a game plan. Let's do it. That's amazing. And did you sit down and write a script together? Did you already have an idea? So I had written maybe four scripts throughout um, my time in college. And so I, I brought four to her and I was like, which one should we do? And she was like, oh, I like this one. So let's do this one. So from that script, um, we just started going through all the steps and I had never done anything like this before. Like I I didn't know, like um, I I just didn't know like where to even begin. So, and she is on the editing and post-production side, but also is very interested in directing. And so being on the other side, she has worked on a lot of projects and kind of knew where to steer me. So she was like, let's spend some more time on this script. Let's like rewrite it um, and get it locked. And then from there, then we can find a cinematographer. You slowly, as each element came into Mm -hmm. play, you felt you had something to show the next person and the next person. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, it started with the script. Um, Then we found a cinematographer through Craigslist. I say that we won the Craigslist lottery because I played it twice and won. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. (laughs) Yeah. That is fantastic. And, and um, of course, I'm sitting here going, yes, how much money did that cost you? Because talk, you talk specifically, this is about a feature film. This is not a short film where you can get your friends together and shoot it on a weekend. This is a fully fledged 90 minute feature film. So, so, to, and, and it, this is Sugar Beach we're talking about. Correct. Yes. Yes. Oh, your face lights up when you go, yes, that's my baby. <laughs> I know that feeling. So, so go, keep, keep going. Yeah. Right. And we were like, uh, I don't know. I, I truly didn't know anything like, um, how much a DP goes per day. Like, Oh, I, <laughs> so we did it with, we were like, how cheaply can we do this with like, but a being able to make it look expensive. So once we found the DP, we like, broke down the script and we're like, okay, we can do it in 10 days and we can set aside two grand for the DP and she was willing to do it. And she, she's wonderful too. And I, and I hope to uh, work with her going forward again on, on our next projects, but we were able to do it in 10 days, which is like already such a feat. Like it, I was expecting maybe a month or so. And Noelle, who's the, my co-producer and um, Amherst alumni, was like, uh, no, we we have 10 days because I have a full-time job and we got to get it done. Did you do 10 days straight or was it weekends? Was it? Yeah, we, we spread it out. So we did it over a week and a half, the first block. And then 
coronavirus like really got out of control. Um, and then we just came back a couple weeks ago and wrapped up the last block, the last four days. And uh, that was that. But like just the, um, the, the steps we did, script, c- consulting Noelle is the co-producer, finding the DP, breaking up the schedule and, and the locations, and then casting dates, and then we hired two PAs to help like, just get like, to help us design the set on the day. Um, and then a costumer that designed our costumes and picked out our outfits on the day. Um, and that was that. But it's, in, it's important to have those people. I know yeah. when I was thinking about super low budget, I'm like, well, I'm pretty savvy with, with set design and, and costume and stuff. I can pull that dress for that girl and those shoes and, but it's ridiculous to think that you could do that and and direct it and and so on and so forth. You were so you acted in you acted in this film as well. Yes. So there was there was no you you can you can you can sort of multitask, but when you're in the moment in the shot acting, you have to that that's your job. That's your single job. Yes, exactly. Um, and I, and I also was the set medic too, because we, we needed one like in COVID, but luckily, uh, no one was like, I didn't have to deal with anything too crazy. Um, and, and well, I guess this is all before, uh, vaccines and all that sort of stuff. So did you just trust, did you pre, uh, did you pre quarantine yourselves before you went to work or you just all knew that you were staying home and being very vigilant before you came together to do a shoot? Well, we actually, so we, we had a COVID compliance officer, um, that whose partner works in healthcare. So we, it, we got re- very lucky. They had multiple rapid tests that we could take prior to each day of filming and everyone tested negative every time. So especially in this last block, this is the first block was tricky because I was pre vaccine. And then the second block, these last four days was post vaccine. Um, so, uh, we just did the little swab 15 minutes. Everyone was negative, did a little chair and, uh, finished it up. That's amazing. You could probably write a book just about not just making your first feature film, but making your first feature film during a pandemic. Yes. It's an amazing achievement. It's an, and so you're all in the can now, everything is there Mm -hmm. and now you've got to put all the jigsaw pieces back together. Yes. We're going to, we have a lot of volume of footage to sift through and then make into a, our movie. Are you an editor? Do you feel, is it that something you're going to do yourself or Noelle is going to do? Yeah, Noelle is an editor, so she's going to edit it, but I'll sit with her and like, we'll go through it together and like, make sure that we have like everything we need. Yes. Yes. And, and then you have to think about sound design and Mm -hmm. music and all of those elements. Do you have that yet? Or are you just kind of sitting, we're going to sit with the picture for a bit? We, we, the, so this is the second part of the Craigslist lottery. We found a sound designer who charged only $200 a day for four days and then is going to help us in, in post for free. So we hit the, amazing we hit the craigslist lottery <laughs> twice let, let me tell you though um and you do deserve that i think all f- first-time filmmakers deserve these angels and allies that drop from the sky to help you and they you know they i think a lot of it has to do with um each one of us remembering how hard it was at the beginning of our careers and you you just want to sort of turn back and help somebody up you know from from slightly behind you there, there's always a lot of that and you'll find a, a place in your career down the road where you'll be able to pay it forward and do the same thing but you still I still think it's a very brave thing to put yourself out there especially if you saw all of your friends who had chosen to be actors getting work and you're feeling like the, the odd man out I, I think especially as you know, you've become this this um, accidental filmmaker when really you could or should have just been an actress. But look at look at everything you've gained and the experiences that you're that you're in the relationships that you're forging. Because now you've done one film, that's not going to be it, right? You're going to keep going. Oh yeah, we're we're gearing up for our next film too. 
which I'm That's very excited fantastic. about. So I want to come back to Sugar Beach and hear a little bit more about it and, and its plans for the future. But rewind a little bit for me to, you just casually mentioned there that, oh, I'm a concert pianist. I trained in, that, that's what I get this, I get this image of this tiny little girl on a piano stool whose feet don't even reach the floor, <laughs> pounding away Rachmaninoff on a keyboard, on a, excuse me, on a Steinway. Is, is that far from the truth? <laughs> Not at all. That's very, it's very <laughs> accurate. I was like two or three years old. Um, and then I p- had a little upright in my mom's house and I would just slam the keys every day. And my grandma was a piano teacher and a music major and also a school teacher. So she started teaching me when I was like a toddler age, like two, three, four, five. And then when I was about six, that's when my mom realized that I was actually going to be very good. Um, so we got, I got myself, um, a really, really good piano teacher and I was with her until I graduated high school and I learned so much. And that's when I really started practicing, like seriously, like two or three hours a day. Um, and then it, that like brought me into college, got me into college for sure. Um, and then while I was at college, my first two years, I focused on piano performance. And then the last two years I... I did, I actually switched my focus the last two years. I focused on contemporary piano and jazz piano and blues piano. And I kind of took a break from classical and then, and also studied um, piano composition, just any kind of composition, any genre. so, So you could write the music for your film as well. I could, I thought about doing that, but I don't know. I'm going to save it for like maybe if the next one, I, I could do it for this one though, if I have to, I don't know yet. It just sounds like it sounds like an, an incredibly um, big talent to let go. I mean, not that you're you've stopped, but w- was there was there some eyebrow raising in the family when they had seen you grow up on this path to be to be a pianist, and now you're not doing that at the moment? It, do you have you had have you had to have, have any of those conversations where? Like, why are you doing this? And we thought we paid all this money for that. And now you're doing this other thing. Right. Um, I'm actually, I'm very uh, fortunate because my family is very supportive. Um, They were like, whatever you want to do. And I still play all the time. So I think that was my mom's number one thing. She was like, you still have to play. So whenever I go over there and I'm not playing, she's like, go play the piano. (laughs) So once I start playing, she's like, okay, thank you. You warmed warmed the house yes oh that's lovely that's and of course when there is a a film about a biography film about some amazing pianist you'll be like I can do that you know they they won't have to hide your hands behind the key you know when they do that through the Steinway shot where they're Mm -hmm. sort of you know moving backwards and forwards and you know their fingers aren't really moving right (laughs) yes They'll be on your the, the shot will start on your fingers and then it'll <laughs> it'll tilt up to your face. Yes, yes. exactly. That's fantastic. That's that's a, that's. I'm always fascinated by um, uh, well, certainly fascinated by people who come from a cre- completely uncreative background and decide one day they're going to be an actor or a or a photographer or something. Um, but to go from uh, really quite a different kind of creative performance to this it's that's that was probably quite a transition in and of itself yeah definitely um it it was I I I knew that I always wanted to incorporate piano somehow in my life and it 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 would stick with me forever too so I, I was also an athlete I played soccer and I ran track but uh I can't play soccer forever, whereas I can play piano forever. And so in my future, I see myself actually creating music for the films that I produce and it'll always like be with me. So I'm very lucky to have that for sure. Amazing. Amazing. So back to your film, your first feature film. Um, Tell me a little bit about it and who's in it and um, and what's going to happen to it. Okay, cool. So it's about three teenagers in their senior year of high school. Rosalind is a soccer star. Emma is a surfer. And Isaac is also a surfer. 
Um, they're in different friend groups and Emma and Isaac are like a hot couple in school. Everyone knows about them. Everyone loves them. They have all the, their cool friends, blah, blah, blah. They want to add to their dynamic and kind of try something new. So Emma initiates um, a thruple or like a, a threesome with Rosalind and the three of them start dating as like they're the three of them are together and no one kind of, no one cares. No one bats an eye. It's, it's just what it is. They they go on a lot of adventures together. They, I, Isaac's character struggles with substance abuse and he kind of drags the girls down with him in that. And it's a slippery slope when you start messing with um, drugs and alcohol and they're young. They don't fully understand the, um, weight or severity of what could happen when you mess around with things like this. And so we just have to watch and see what happens. Like, do they stay together and go down this crazy path or do they kind of say goodbye? Like you have to do in, in instances like this and to get your future back and your health back. So it, it it's a very uh, prescient subject, I think, of the way young people now with all the freedoms and all the connections and all the global ideas that are at your feet and at your fingertips is that how do you process all of that when you're still a very young person who has no other life experiences to to compare it with mm -hmm. and you were saying that this also is based a little bit on a true story it's based on some people that you knew at college yeah uh yeah in high school i i grew up in um palos verdes and it's kind of a secluded part of los angeles not many people know about it like outside of la it's one of those places you either go to or come from. You don't go through there. People right. sort of go there to live in Palos Verdes and they stay on the hill yeah. and, and rarely come down. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and so we, it kind of takes place there. It was, it's a fictional town called Sugar Beach, but it's, it's definitely based on what goes on in, in Palos Verdes. <laughs> Sure. It sounds a little bit, um, a little bit, a uh, teenage version of Big Little Lies. That that is another. That was another enclave of of perfect, seemingly perfect life, and that's always fun, isn't it, in a film or when you're yeah. writing to create a world of a perfect life, and then you scratch the surface, and every time you take another onion skin layer away, there's uh, there's something else underneath, mm -hmm. and that's always always fun to play with. Yes. Do you need to raise a little bit more money to to do your post production, or are you are you kind of settled with that, and then and then film festivals? Yes, so we do need to raise a little bit more money um, for sure. I was gonna start like a GoFundMe um, or a Indiegogo campaign and just start crowdfunding. Uh, we have been sitting with the picture for a little bit. Like once we finish filming, we're like, okay, let's just take a deep breath, let's just relax for a little bit, and then we can like start going back at it. Um, but since Noelle's editing, like she's been like putting together our assembly line in the meantime. So, but yeah, we're going to have to raise some more money to get the score and sound design and everything perfect and polished. Yes. Yes. There's a, I know um, as when, when I did my feature film, you think you're done and you're never really quite done. There's right. always, the, and then there's prosaic costs like, well, the lawyer who's who's completing out this contract, she needs to be paid and, oh, and you're going to do your yearly accounts. You need an accountant to do that. And it seems to sort of just go on and on and on, yeah. um, but in a, in a good way, in a good way, because it all happens somehow in a, in a miraculous way. It does. Yeah. Fate is on our side for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, are you finding, um, I'm, I'm sort of asking young people how they're making their way in the world. And I sound very old and wise, but really, you know, we're, we're also thinking about people listening to your story and wondering you're living in Los Angeles, you're living in Long Beach, which is a, a, a an area of Los Angeles. Uh, is this your full-time job or are you doing other jobs to keep body and soul together? You've got your piano skills and what, what, what are you, what are you doing? How are you, how are you doing that? I am a day trader. <laughs> I, I trade crypto. Wait a minute. So you do something else as well. Yeah. I, I, I the ultimate goal is to like be a full-time actor filmmaker, but I have been, you know, do it a little bit of crypto trading. 
here and there. You say that like it's furtive and it's it's a slightly undercap, but it's becoming quite the thing though these days, right? It's a, it's a real thing. Crypto is uh, absolutely the future, I think. Well, I I um, I did some writing for uh, a, a cryptocurrency company that was starting out, and they were paying me in cryptocurrency, oh, uh, wow. which reminds me I need to check my account to see what the balance is because I kind of forgot about it for a while. But they were also they were in an entertainment coin, and they were also talking about how this is how films will be financed in the future. That's very true. Absolutely, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what what do you have any thoughts if you look back on your on your long and varied career now as a, yeah. as a, you know as a student as somebody who's just starting out and somebody who was was your you know in your position say four or five years ago could you give out any advice on that there's some thoughts that you wish somebody had shared with you when you were at that stage just about to go to college or just out of high school yes um don't wait for anyone just do it yourself because you can you have the power if you if you want to make a movie you can and you can do it all by yourself there's so many ways so don't wait just do it yes no one's coming no one's coming you have to you have to come like you're you're the one yes Yes, isn't that true? Well, I think that's that's probably a wonderful way to finish up our conversation. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. We will put what we will do is um, we will put links to your film and how to follow it and how to uh, you know contribute to the crowdfunding campaign when you launch it, so that anybody listening here can can maybe contribute a little bit to to the arts, which is what it's all about. Oh, thank you. That that would be awesome. No, we've got to keep we've got to keep the uh, we've got to keep the money flowing and the and the creativity flowing. Yeah, Zoe, thank absolutely. you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Fierce Female Filmmakers is a production of Artemisia's Daughters. For more information, go to artemisiasdaughters.org. Our theme tune is composed by Charlie Mackey.